let's welcome in our, our next guest sharmila joshi is now joining us sharmila you heard that the management at titan just before this what will be your call on the stock you think any fall is a buying opportunity or after a 30 40% run up that you've already seen this year it's still a very expensive stock you know i think just given the fact that it's run up so much uh, you need to be a little cautious because i do believe that uh, some of the volume uh, growth that they've seen uh, this quarter uh, has been because uh, there was a shift uh, towards organized players in the jewelry market uh, as a result of demonetization and you know that demonetization also happened at a time when uh, uh, you do see uh, some high, uh, sort of buying coming in because it's marriage season etc uh but you know traditionally uh, uh people do prefer to uh, stick with their old uh, jewelers so you need to see how much of this actually uh, is a business that they can sustain uh so from that perspective i would wait to uh, wait it out one more quarter uh, to a to see whether they re- they can uh, keep this kind the, the kind of volume growth that we saw and uh, uh b as you said secondly you know the stock has had a huge run up but that said i think uh, uh within the jewelry space this would still be a stock uh, that uh, i would continue to like uh, i think uh, in in um, almost every other term it is better than the other uh, players within that space you know considering what havels is trading at or godrej is trading at after results or hul after the recent run up this is also not a very expensive stock then uh, yeah let it be <laughs> yeah when you put it like that definitely havel seems to have run up uh, way ahead of itself and uh, uh, as you know that's a stock that i've recommended in the past uh, but uh, uh, titan is a little slower to grow than that you know i mean it is not exactly a momentum play uh, so the fact that it has actually uh, gone up uh, so much uh, should mean that uh, it, it it needs to consolidate a little more but i i think i would agree you know whether it is a havels whether it is a godrej whether it is a titan uh post uh, uh, numbers i think they all now really need to just uh, uh, sort of stay, spend some time at the prices they are at before they can move higher right and actually if they do you know one year of consolidation it would start to make them look attractive again i doubt you'll get a one year of consolidation very honestly because you know the kind of mood market is in so if you were to even hear that uh, uh, the kind of growth that market is expecting is continuing in any of these stocks i'm sure you'll see higher levels but i think you just need to see that confirmation for another quarter or so right uh, any other names after results which you like anything on the mid cap small cap side that you have uh, recently liked after numbers well nothing comes to mind immediately but i think uh, we just saw a good set of numbers from vedanta so that's not a stock that i like but i think within the metal space we have seen uh, fairly uh, a good performance from uh, novelist so i think hindalco uh, looks uh, good to me at this price uh i think uh, among the banking names i liked uh, dcb uh, post numbers and i also liked uh, the kind of commentary that the management gave that in the I just wanted to say hindalco is a buy now as well yes yeah okay can you go ahead the commentary uh yeah so i was talking about dcb bank because you know you saw this stock correct uh, uh, a goodish bit when uh, uh, when they spoke of expanding their branch network etc but i think you know now they're saying that that kind is kind of done and Uh, by october they'll have 300 branches and then they don't see any more capital expansion also i think you know some of the other private banks are going through that whole uh, overstatement or whatever understatement of npa kind of issue so i think from that perspective also i think dcb bank uh, looks uh, seems to have uh, uh, sort of dodged that bullet as well as the really bad npa uh, kind of bullet so i think uh, from both perspectives uh, you know whether it is the kind of numbers they gave the kind of ni growth they had their npa levels the fact that they uh, will now consolidate at the 300 kind of branches without adding too many i think all these things uh, uh, make the stock quite attractive to me i think you can buy the stock with a target of closer to 220 you think in the longer run it will continue to grow uh, well uh, you know they are growing from a smaller base so as compared to some of the other banks uh, they have a better chance but you know th- you know this space has now really become uh, sort of you know who uh, gets it right in terms of uh, the kind of digital offering they have etc and so far they seem to be on a good wicket uh, so i think not just dcb but every other banking stock now you really uh, need to see how they plan their future uh, strategy which is why there was a lot of excitement for instance if you remember when idfc bank started and i think you know they've done all, they've also done a reasonably good job in the kind of uh, uh, market strategy uh, that they've had uh so you know as i'm saying you just need to uh, watch all these because uh, for the larger player in fact it's it's more tricky to kind of you know grow uh, at the pace that they are at and so far they've not disappointed hdfc bank i mean with eyes closed you can almost say that you know they're going to go, grow uh, 20% per uh, quarter 
So that is pretty fantastic. I mean, uh, uh, HDFC Bank is almost like too good a story to believe sort of, you know, because I do not remember how many uh, quarters in the past, whether it is 16 or 20 quarters, you have seen almost, you know, that 1920, 1920 kind of growth uh, coming from them. Uh, so uh, for them to keep doing that, I think uh, is now uh, uh, perhaps going to be more challenging than some of for these uh, smaller names to, you know, uh, clock in good growth. Right. Uh, so, but do you think financial services is one of the best plays? I would think so because you know it will also sort of reflect. Uh, uh, I mean, you know, if you start seeing this space do well, it also means that some of the other problems that are there at a macroeconomic level are getting uh, sorted out. You know, uh, so whether it is uh, uh, the the NPA issues uh, for a lot of these banks, you know, the leverage sectors, whether it's power, whether it's capital goods. Uh, when you actually see corporate India starting to borrow again, it will. I think reflect uh, in their numbers and you will see uh, that uh, uh, lending book improve and uh, uh, so from that perspective also I think it is a very important sector to uh, always sort of track. Right. Uh, what do you make of NBFCs or you know microfinance companies? Do you think that is also a sector or you know maybe extending it to names like Edelweiss or Motilal Oswal, do you think that is also a space which can do well? It has done well, right? I mean, in the last uh, year or two, I think it has been one of the best performing uh, sectors. So going ahead, hopefully it will differentiate a little bit and you will see uh, some of the models doing uh, better than the others. Uh, we have had a phase where almost everything has sort of uh, given you very good uh, returns. And uh, there is no reason to uh, sort of think that why they uh, should not because I think clearly they found a niche area where uh, banking, where the banking sector was not really addressing this requirement and they sort of step, stepped in, uh, you know, some of the micro lending space or even I think uh, uh, some of these uh, broking houses uh, with the kind of books that they have now. Uh, so uh, I mean, uh, you just I think uh, need to be a little careful there from the point of view that uh, especially in the uh, microfinance names, whether they can continue to show the kind of growth that they've had uh, over these uh, last two years. But I think some of these other NBFC names that would be a lot more comfortable, the housing finance names or the other NBFCs like a Bajaj Finance or something, I think those are probably uh, uh, better placed at this uh, point in time. I even like an UG one, for instance, at this uh, price. So uh, I would continue to like these stocks. Right, but do you think that you know these names are already pricing in growth, or after the recent correction, you know there is some value into them? See, everything is uh, has run up, you know, so it's very difficult to actually find something that you would say is absolutely pure value at this point in time. So everything is sort of factoring in some kind of attractive growth uh, uh, going ahead. So I mean, you know, that would be an underlying caveat for almost anything that you recommend at this point in time that you have to sort of keep a track as to how uh, market is moving because obviously the momentum play is doing better in the market. Uh, like this. Uh, so, uh, uh, if you choose to be in a sector which has seen uh, a sharp run up, then you have to keep that at the back of your mind. But that does not mean that they will not be able to, uh, you know, manage the same growth uh, going ahead. Perhaps you need to give some of these another quarter again because, uh, uh, you know, I think at the start of the year you did see a lot of people, a lot of managements come out and say that their uh, collections, etc., are coming back to normal. Uh, post uh, demonetization, but I think you know in terms of growth, whether they can ac actually do the kind of growth, if the business actually grows the way it used to earlier, probably it may take another quarter, uh, which is why we did see some pain again in NBFCs in this quarter post numbers. But that's what I'm saying. I think you need to give it another quarter. Uh, but to my mind, uh, this would be an attractive space going ahead as well. Right, and uh, what would that mean for home finance companies? Uh, the flashes that you're getting at the bottom of your screen that ICICI has cut home loan rates by about 30 basis points. You think competition over there is increasing? It seems to be because uh, you know clearly banks have the money to uh, lend now, and uh, this uh, this is a good sector to be in housing finance because I'm sure the uh, defaults etc are much lower in uh, housing finance there in than they are in. Uh, some of the other lending, uh, uh, consumer sort of lending products that banks would have. Uh, but again, I think, you know, over here, uh, uh, perhaps uh, uh, whether banks can actually capture uh, market share uh, on the basis of uh, lower interest rate is something that will, uh, that remains to be seen. 
uh, because I think that uh, even in the past, even among the housing finance companies, you did have a differentiation in terms of the kind of rates that they had and uh, in spite of that, uh, companies grew. So it is also the reach, also uh, the ease with which they give a loan, etc. So a lot of factors uh, coming in, what, what are the kind of tie-ups they have. So it remains to be seen, but definitely I think the competition for housing finance companies has gone up. We were talking to Sharmila Joshi, he's still, uh, she's still with us. Uh, Ma'am, if you could just tell us about, uh, you know, housing finance uh, in terms of businesses. You know, time and again, we've seen this competition every time when, you know, ICICI launched a product or any SPI came out and cut a rate. But do you think they are perpetual business? They'll continue to grow? Uh, that, I mean, is, is definitely a, it's a function of uh, what kind of demand you have for housing. Uh, but yeah, I think it's uh, safe no, to but assume. But in the last so many years, demand for housing has been low, but these businesses have grown. Exactly, because I think that uh, the price of housing is such that, you know, people are definitely required to uh, take a loan to uh, fund, that, fund that requirement. And I think the sheer uh, uh, need for affordable housing is something that uh, uh, is perhaps uh, what is what plays out in the favor of housing finance companies. And I think even in the recent past, the kind of moves uh, the government has made in making affordable housing uh, uh, cheaper or better available at better rates, better interest rates, etc. will go a long way in uh, uh, sort of ensuring that their growth uh, doesn't slow down. Uh, so I think uh, maybe not in the absolute uh, metros, but uh, in the second tier and uh, some of the smaller cities, you would continue to see this demand uh, constant. And uh, uh, I don't uh, foresee, at least in the near future, uh, housing finance companies uh, not sort of doing well. I think they should be able to meet uh, whatever targets they set for themselves. Right. As far as uh, affordable housing is concerned, do you expect that area to do pretty well with the recent uh, you know launches happening in the affordable space? With the way you know most uh, most of the talk around affordable housing has been, do you expect that sector to do well? See, I think you know now this has sort of become a market which is more in the favor of uh, the buyer. Earlier, it was actually the uh, the seller or the developer or the builder, uh, you know, who sort of called all the shots. But now I think, you know, with the change in regulation, with this whole RERA coming into effect, uh, as well as the fact uh, that, you know, because of this whole uh, demonetization drive, you've had sort of less uh, black money in the system. Uh, it will mean that uh, a lot of the deals that uh, you see in housing will be more realistic in terms of, you know, what at what price they, are, they get done or what is actually offered uh, for that price. Because both things are now sort of under attack simultaneously. Uh, the, the rules which builders and developers have to follow have become far more stringent. And at the same time, uh, sort of uh, cheap money or uh, money at, uh, which they could access very easily has now uh, come down. So, you know, I think uh, it, it's, it's great for buyers really, but how actually uh, you could see a slump in uh, buying, which is what I hear from the real estate market, that perhaps uh, uh, you are you don't see too many people buying homes uh, out there. Uh, but I think you know that's a matter of time, and uh, this month, this year should see sort of a bottoming out, not just in terms of interest rate, but also uh, you should see uh, demand slowly beginning to pick up, especially as we were discussing in the affordable uh, housing uh, bit. So there is housing finance, there are these real estate players, but do you think that suppliers of these uh, could also be interesting plays? You know, there I'm, uh, by suppliers you mean like the... Islamic plays, Havels, anything. Yeah, in there. fact, I've never really recommended uh, housing, meaning the actual real estate players, because I think there, there again is a lot of grey and uh, what are, you know, what are the land banks, what price they've had at, etc, etc. It's a little uh, too complicated almost on a name-by-name -name basis. Uh, some of them have corporate governance issues, etc. So I've always found this proxy uh, sort of uh, play much better, whether it's a Kajaria Ceramics, whether it's the paint company, uh, I would even put housing finance companies within that play, Century Ply, Kajaria Cinemax, as you mentioned. Is, you know, these are some of the stocks that I have rec I have recommended in the past. Uh, so many, uh, I would add to that list. So I think uh, th that is definitely going to be an interesting play as well. Right. Uh, you know, just in terms of uh, some names that are not doing that well today. So you have an idea which is down 7 odd percent after numbers. Don't you think that markets are, uh, you know, forgetting the fact that they have done good cost control or do you think markets want to see that cost control much more? So only if they sustain that, then markets will give it that multiple. See, I think for idea now, the whole story is really going to be more to do with uh, uh, how they deal with uh, Vodafone moves ahead. Uh, because uh, uh, I think they sort of, uh, the shock in the numbers was really more last quarter uh, than this quarter. And I think, you know, that sort of gave you an indication that... Uh, 
uh, perhaps uh, now everything is out there and uh, the due diligence or whatever the approval process can start. So I think it's going to be more uh, a function of that and probably post this correction it will now come to a price where you may find it attractive to really re-enter the stock or whatever. But I think you know it's a little uh, risky now, now that uh, uh, you know that expectation sort of plays out of the way. Uh, but there's no telling, I mean, you know, if you uh, sort of hear positive news, uh, uh, positive news flow in terms of their, uh, the, if they were to, for instance, get their approvals and all uh, faster, then I think you could see a run on the stock. But I don't think this is, uh, yes, I mean, results did play a factor, but perhaps people are now not so interested in owning the stock for from a, you know, really longer term sort of a perspective. Right. Uh, let's welcome in Davlesh Sharma also now. He's uh, joining us uh, from Indore. Davlesh, what are your topics? Hi, yes, uh, I've been looking at uh, banking uh, as of now, you know, the currently Kotak Mahindra Bank, I'm looking at this stock has given already a good uh, rally in the past from uh, 920 odd levels, but uh, still it's on our buy list. Uh, I think uh, Kotak Mahindra Bank is, uh, we are targeting at around 985 to 1010, uh, maybe not just in a day or two, but yeah, in a couple of uh, uh, trading sessions. So with that, uh, our stop loss in uh, Kotak Mahindra Bank on the downside comes at uh, 960. Uh, with the uh, Kotak Mahindra Bank, we are also looking at metal as specifically the good buying momentum we have seen in the last two days. Hindalco is looking good at 198, 199 odd levels. Uh, we believe Hindalco will uh, somewhat try to touch 205, 206 over the period of time. Uh, and Hindalco, our stop loss is uh, placed at 196 on closing basis. With that, also a third pick is from metal space itself. JSW still we are recommending to our clients as well. At 202, we expect JSW still somewhat at 212, uh, you know, in coming sessions. And uh, on the downside, the risk reward is also favorable. We are placed over stop loss at around 198 on closing basis. Right. Uh, any call on Glenmark? Yeah, I think it will be like, you know, cat, uh, you know catching a falling knife. Uh, we are still bearish. Uh, the, the swing which we have seen in uh, pharma space right now, uh, th 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 this will be way too early to catch, uh, you know, buy under strategy. As far as Glenmark is specifically concerned, we still believe the kind of selling pressure we have seen in the last couple of days. There are much more, you know, downside to be seen towards uh, 670, 680 in coming sessions. Right. Uh, Sharmila, what will be your call on Glenmark? It's down 6% today and of course uh, it was down some 15-20% on Friday as well. Well, I didn't see, uh, think that the numbers had anything you know, to suggest uh, why the stock should be down so much. So perhaps it's the other concerns which are taking their toll. So I think for me it's now coming to a level you can buy it. Right. But you know, numbers have led to a downgrade of 20% because there was this one drug that they have which really did not play out pretty well and which was expected to reduce the debt. So do you think one should start to buy now or let just these numbers, these EPS estimates digest in the market? It may take a while, the stock may you know, be slightly higher and not at these levels. But do you think that markets should at least digest these numbers first? Well, I think if you saw the kind of fall the stock had on Friday and what we are seeing today, it seems to be in a hurry to digest the numbers. Uh, so I think it's, a, uh, it's now coming to a price where you can look at it. Right. Any other pharma picks? You think pharma as a sector has not done well? So is it getting into the attractive zone? Uh, that's what I've been thinking for the last uh, couple of months, but so far really that theory hasn't uh, played out. Uh, none of the leverage sectors, in fact, if you had bought them, have really uh, given you uh, those kind of returns to warrant uh, buying into them. But uh, yes, I think uh, uh, from uh, a business perspective, I do like some of the names. I do like a Sun Pharma at this price. Uh, Biocon, I've had a recommendation uh, for but quite some time. If anybody Shilpa is Medicare. getting into these names, uh, you think that there'll be it'll, it's some time before you know you start to see returns? Oh uh, yes, clearly I think you know because uh, uh, I mean you know you are not really seeing US FDA concerns go away in a hurry, and companies are taking their time to address those. And I think even as you address old ones, you have new observations or whatever. So uh, perhaps you know some uh, some time of uh, adjustment is going on where uh, valuation versus versus uh, the kind of concerns and how soon they sort them etc. Uh, so that period of adjustment is uh, sort of currently underway. I don't think the stocks will fall too much from current levels, but yes, as you said, you know for them to actually start going up, it could be a while. Right, uh, Lovelace. Any other pharma picks that you have? Uh, we are right now, you know, tracking uh, Dr. Reddy at current levels. Uh, as a trading perspective, I don't think it may, uh, you know, give that kind of a risk reward ratio. But if someone is trying to go for, uh, you know, low levels of favorable risk reward uh, kind of a trade, I think Dr. Reddy is looking good. Uh, this particular stock has, uh, you know, 
tension of uh, dialing over the five more muscles. I think uh, apart from popularity, you can look at Ajanta Pharma as well. Uh, 1637, 1630 continues to be a strong term. So one can look at you know 1675 uh, and Ajanta Pharma with the stop loss at 1620 uh, in the next couple of days. Right. Uh, just request you both to stay on with us. Markets are just about to close. I'll just come back uh, to you all after that. So if I look at uh, the markets, 45 points half for the Nifty. Again, it's a record close, 9,445. But uh, markets have been doing a record close and that's why. Uh, you know, 9,444 also is a record close. It was record close on Friday and that has led to a record move today as well. Yes, Bank about 11 to 12 points lower. 1,471 continues to move down after that disclosure. You have access, uh, you have uh, Ambuja Cement flat with a negative bias. ITC is up around a percent or so. And Kotak Mahindra Bank is up about 15 rupees. Bharti Airtel, 1 rupee lower, 3, 4, 364 and Infosys down about 10 rupees, 1.1 percent lower. IOC up 1.6%, 442. Coal India 277, about 1 rupee higher. And you have Tata Motors, which is up around 80 pesa or so. Z Entertainment 1 rupee lower, 525. And Reliance down about 7 rupees, 1343. Uh, Reliance has not done that well after the recent surge uh, post uh, the Reliance Geo data. Tata, Power, uh, Tata Motors about 1 rupee lower. Sun Pharma 1 rupee lower 654 hdfc limited 10 rupees higher and you had tech mahindra which is up around one to two rupees indescent bank eight rupees higher tala steel four and a half percent move it was among the top gainers remember they declare numbers tomorrow most likely it should come out post market hours but 9.7 million shares that's around 19 to 20 rupees 456 for tata steel four and a half percent higher extremely strong as far as movement uh, is concerned. So that's Tata Steel for you. Let's look at Hindalco as well. 4% higher, 198, 199 for Hindalco, 18 million shares traded. That's about 8 rupees higher, 198, 199 for Hindalco Limited. Dr. Reddy's 3.5% higher, 266 for, 2,667 for Dr. Reddy's, not 266, 2,666. Bosch was up around 2.7 and Lupin also did well. So the entire pharma pack actually did well. From the top five gainers, you had Dr. Reddy's, Lupin among the top gainers. So one can say that pharma sector did decently well. However, Sun Pharma and Orbindu, they are also part of the Nifty, but they did not particularly do that well. If we actually look at the top losers, Orbindo was the top loser, was down 1.6. You had Infosys, which was down 1%, and Aisha Motors was also on the lower side. That's Orbindo Pharma for you, 1.6% lower, 613. Uh, let's look at Infosys as well, 1.1%, and Aisha Motors also was down about a percent or so. 28,915 for Aisha Motors. Bharti, Infratel, and Hero Motocorp are among the marginal losers. Let's look at some gainers as well and what's happening in the mid-cap space. So, India Cement continues to do well. 220, 7.5 million shares traded. Very, very strong move for India Cement, 7.5 million shares. And recently, it has done extremely well as well. So, it's not that it's a cheap stock anymore, but still, buying continues for that name. Let's look at Piramal Enterprises as well. It was uh, reacting to numbers up around 10% or so at a point of time. I think it closed around 8, 8.5% higher. But uh, nevertheless, was up. Uh, okay, it was up ten and a half. I think it went up to about twelve odd percent, one point four odd million shares traded. So that was also among the gainers. V2 Retail did very very well. So that was a name which was up eleven percent. Did extremely well today. In fact, since morning it was doing well. I did not see the numbers or anything which has come because you know there was there was no particular announcement that came in. One point seven million shares. Very very strong in terms of movement. You have Tourism Finance Corporation up nine percent. Geojet Financial Services was up close to 10%. Mirza International did up, uh, did well, was up close to about 8.5% to 9.5%. Hathaway Cables was up 6, 6.5%. So these are names uh, that did decently well. Manpasan Beverages was up 5.5%, 7.45% for Manpasan Beverages. That's also a name that did well. Let's look at some marginal losers as well. So Suzlon was down 5%. Idea was down 6%. Glenmark was down 5%. And Inox Wind was also down about 17 odd percent. You had JNK Bank which reacted to numbers down about 3 odd percent or so. Sharmila, what would be your call on uh, Inox Wind and Suzlon? Do you think it's a sector which people just punish if results are not good? Uh, and uh, very honestly, if you heard the management of Inox Wind, uh, there was no real positive takeaway that you could have from that because, you know, uh, there seems to be uh, a genuine issue with uh, states not uh, sort of renewing their PPFAs, etc. And that has hit uh, the... Uh, stock and they didn't sound very optimistic as to how soon the situation was going to rectify. And uh, very honestly, Suzlon is not a stock that I've liked now for the longest time. So uh, uh, that's never been one of my recommendations. 
right but you know with states not accepting those ppas order book becomes quite bleak or outlook on order book becomes quite weak absolutely you know and that was very evident in uh, inox wins uh, management call that uh, they don't really see how soon the situation will rectify and they came to a stage where those agreements were not getting signed so uh, uh, that's not like the best place uh, to be in really uh, for a company in in that space right uh, lovelish what will be your call on wind sector yeah, uh, we are not tracking particularly, you know, the kind of uh, patterns we are seeing. Uh, we don't see any kind of, you know, favorable risk reward as well. I mean, so on one of the stocks, we like that 70. But at this point of time, also, you know, risk reward won't be favorable. But now we are not tracking specifically in sector in perspective. Right. Uh, in terms of power sector, any calls that you have? Yes, I think you mentioned Tata Power. I was looking at the charts right now. Uh, one of the stocks that has, you know, very good uh, risk to what, uh, you know, opportunity as well. So one can look at Tata Power as an investment perspective, not just as a trading idea, but over a couple of periods. Uh, this stock has a very high, uh, you know, probability that it may uh, test 87 to 88 uh, going forward. Uh, it's, uh, trading at its, you know, very long term averages, near very long term averages. So risk to what is also favorable. One can go long in Tata Power. We can expect 87 in a couple of weeks. Uh, with that, 79 is our stop loss of closing base. What will be your call on uh, PSU banks? PNB declares numbers tomorrow. Any view? See, uh, uh, PSU banks, uh, if one is uh, uh, looking at a couple of months, we are very bullish, uh, specifically PSU banks, uh, uh, as, as far as you talk about PNB, Bank of Baroda, Canada Bank, all of them has given a very, uh, you know, good long-term breakouts. Uh, so, if uh, one can look at for, uh, if one wants to look at three to four days, I don't think it would be suitable since we are looking at volatility and that might uh, not be suitable. But in case someone wants to add PNB, I think uh, one can have a time horizon of two to three months, uh, let the uh, you know volatility settled down this particular stock has a very good support at 164 to 163 i think that's where the uh, you know demand comes in so one can look at this stock at those levels it can turn back uh, hit 170 170 though we will recommend fresh buying about 180 into the portfolios right uh sharmila what will be your call on uh, you know some of the psu banking names a lot of them declare numbers today uh, I think we'll have to wait and see the numbers because, you know, what we've really seen is that there is no uh, sort of uh, one, uh, you know, th this thing that we can go by that all of them will be bad or all of them will be good. Uh, so, some of the smaller PSU banks haven't really had uh, that great a showing at uh, uh, this quarter. And I would expect the pressure to be there, but PNB has worked hard uh, because, you know, some of their problems were sort of... Uh, cited much before some of the other uh, PSU banks. So, in that sense, perhaps they could be in a better position. So, I think it's best to uh, see the numbers, seeing that some of these stocks have had a fairly decent run-up, uh, you know, over the last two, three months. Right. Uh, Sharmila, thank you so much for taking our time for us. Lovelish, always a pleasure talking to you.